Let's do a time travel and ask myself a pertinent question about Express Entry. Why should I create an Express Entry profile? This is what I had to say four years ago in 2019. When it, when it comes to Express Entry pool, basically you are marketing yourself. You are saying that I exist. Um, if you don't send in your CV, for example, in the market, the likelihood of you getting a job is difficult. Same is the case with immigration. Same is the case with provinces. Uh, there are provinces in Canada who are interested in selecting people, nominating them because it's a vast country. It has different geographical regions and every region has its own um, labor market needs. Um, immigration itself is the federal government premise. Federal government is responsible to issue permanent residence status to uh, foreign nationals. But provinces also jump in. They say, we would also like to work with the federal government and be able to nominate few people who would be beneficial to our economy. And that's where a lot of people get confused as to why is it uh, important for me to become part of the express entry pool. They don't realize that express entry pool is actually associated with provincial nomination. If they are not in the express entry pool, the provinces in most of the cases, there are a few categories where you don't really need to make an express entry profile, but most of the provinces would like to access your details by way of an express entry uh, profile and to enter the express entry profile there are minimum requirements people often look at their ranking points only they think okay i have 340 points i might not get selected because the current ranking is for under the federal skill worker program is hovering around 450 to 470 points so i don't really have that much of ranking points so i should not create my express entry profile what's the point in doing so but what they don't realize is that if they don't go in the pool, they are not in the picture even for, for the provinces. So that is very, very important. But then to enter the express entry pool, I again refer back to my slide, to enter the express entry pool, you need to accumulate 67 points. 67 points. And a lot of people, they don't think about 67 points. They only calculate their ranking. If you don't have those 67 points, you can't enter the pool. And if you can't enter the pool, you can't get selected by the federal government or the provinces. So you are losing big time by not being in the pool. Um, you, you might be having 67 points or more points even, but there might be circumstances, instances where you might not still be able to enter the pool. For example, the minimum IELTS band score, the English test score required in each module, and we understand they need IELTS general track, right? So in each module, reading, writing, speaking, and listening, you need to score at least six. And with those score, you also need to score at least 67, the cumulative score. So if you have more than 67 or exactly 67, you might still not be able to enter because maybe you had seven bands in reading, eight band in speaking, nine band in writing, and then in the last uh, module you had 5.5. Because of this one module where you scored less than six, you are not eligible to enter the pool. So that is very, very important to know. Same is the case, the point that you were raising about the work experience. Yeah. You need to have at least one year of full-time paid and continuous work experience. So paid would mean that your internships are not going to, uh, unpaid internships are not going to be counted. Um, any work that is uh, that is done to acquire a degree, maybe it's a degree requirement, for example, for you to work, internship, as I said, uh, will not be counted. So it has to be paid work. It has to be continuous as well. And by continuity, um, I would mean that, um, and you were actually making that point when we were having our discussion earlier, that if you have, say, one year experience um, and full time paid, you meet the requirement. But what if you have four years experience, but that four years from the immigration point of view is not considered four years? Why? Because there is no continuity. Say if you work for 11 months at one place, you took an off for a month or so, 
Then you started working with another employer, worked for them for another 11 months, and so on and so forth. If you apply for a job with that kind of experience, you would always claim, I have four years experience, because you would ignore or the employer hiring you would say, well, yes, you appear to have four years experience. They would not be concerned about those one month gaps. But when it comes to immigration, the visa officer is going to refuse your application saying you don't have even one year experience because the continuity was broken. So that is where a lot of people get confused. And that is where maybe it's a good idea to consider consulting with someone who is knowledgeable enough to give you the honest opinion about your eligibility rather than just saying that, you know, go ahead and submit your application. We're going to make it happen. It doesn't doesn't work like that. Well, it was uh, me four years ago, and I think the advice is still valid. What do you think about this advice? Comments down below. And if you have any questions, you can leave those in the, the comments, and I'll be happy to respond.